In this picture, uh, Mohanad Hamadi is holding one of the PKM machine guns that he believed that they were sending back to the al-Qaeda and Iraq forces to be used against the uh, U.S. forces. Uh, in this picture, Wad al one is unloading a Stinger missile, uh, an air aircraft weapon that he believed was going to be able to be used against uh, U.S. aircraft. Uh, they were really excited about this particular item because they were in such short supply uh, and that his organization would be able to utilize this effectively. This one is one Mohanad is uh, loading up an RPG. Uh, and this one, uh, both Wad and uh, Hamadi are loading a crate of C4 explosives that they think is going back. Uh, and then this is another one of Mr. Hamadi with a, a PKM machine gun. Why would they want to ship them from Kentucky to Iraq? In this particular instance, uh, there's a number of different things we were sending. It was money, uh, explosives, grenades, machine guns, stinger missiles, uh, sniper rifles. Uh, they were excited about, not necessarily about what type of items, but just being able to support the uh, al-Qaeda and Iraq forces that they had left previously. With these shipments, you were able to get him to talk about what he had done? Right. Uh, the, the case had two two components, a historical component and a proactive component. The historical component was looking at his historical IED activity in Iraq, the proactive component being trying to determine if there was an additional cell here, other members. And, and what did Alwan say he had done? What were his claims? Alwan claimed that he had been a insurgent a t IED uh, emplacer for al-Qaeda in Iraq and had, you know, blew up Humvees, Abrams tanks, had been a sniper, had shot at U.S. forces, had killed U.S. forces, uh, you name it, uh, he went the gambit of insurgent activity. To hear him say that on the undercover tapes must have been chilling. It, it was yes. gut-wrenching. I mean, because you knew that this person had been involved in, in killing U.S. forces.